Cold, mechanical, and ruthless are a few words to describe the sinister Sternritter that I'll be analyzing in this video. Sternritter KBG9 is a robotic menace who leaves us with an unforgettable impression after he reveals his obsession with gathering data. During the Thousand Year Blood War arc, we witness his bone chilling ability to extract data from his incapacitated victims with his really freaky tendrils that he conceals under his cloak. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down and analyzing everything that we know about BG9 from the Bleach manga and the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, which extends his role within the story with some anime exclusive scenes. Now, be sure to stick around until the end of this video because I'm going to be speculating what a shrift ability is, since we don't get to learn what the K in Sternritter K stands for. So, without further delay, this is my complete character analysis on BG9. Before the video begins, only 12% of the people who watch my content are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, then subscribe and stick around for more content just like this. Now let's get back to the topic of the video. BG9 makes his debut appearance within chapter 495 of the manga and in episode 4 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. BG9 is a tall robotic Sternritter with the entirety of his face concealed behind a white helmet, which appears to be inspired from medieval armor. These unique features of his appearance make his design feel unique and add to his threatening demeanor. BG9 has been described to be inhuman because of his totally bizarre powers like his ability to gather data from a body which reveals several creepy tendrils which appear to originate from his chest and they can elongate to pierce the flesh of his victims in order to extract data from their bodies. This is easily one of the most bizarre abilities that we see during the Thousand Year Blood War arc. It makes BG9 feel like an inhuman creature abducting his victims and probing them with his frightening tendrils. BG9 wears a white cloak with high collars and under the cloak he conceals his tendrils which are attached to his body. The Sternritter wears a form of armor over his upper body and torso as well as wielding armor on his forearms. He wields a reishi weapon in the form of a minigun and this weapon's ability to fire projectiles contrasts well with the abilities of Siphon's Bankai which he steals from her and then faces off against. It is said that BG9 has an artificial robotic soul due to his personality traits, which make him seem like a malevolent artificial intelligence. BG9's personality is just as unique as his appearance. He is identified by his cold indifference towards the lives of innocent people, even daring to kill a child for the sake of extracting information and learning more about the enemy. Unfortunately, we don't know what shrift ability he was granted, but we do know that he is Sternritter K, so fans have assumed that his powers that he wields are K for the knowledge. Due to his terrifying fixation on gathering data against the will of his victims. He also has a mechanical speech pattern as he makes a lot of references to numerical values, further reinforcing the idea that he is some form of artificial intelligence. He does prove that he is self-aware as he makes statements like, I was never breathing to begin with. If he doesn't need to breathe, then he isn't made of biological matter, which only leads us to deduce that he is a robot. BG9 demonstrates a level of cruelty that is absolutely terrifying. And this is when he had delivered a fatal blow to Amida's younger sister, who is just a child. He threatens to kill Omida's family if he doesn't reveal the whereabouts of Siphon, and he tells Omida that if he releases his younger sister, then her insides will pour out, asking if he would be okay with that. When he is revealed to still be breathing following a devastating attack from Siphon's perfected Shunko, it surprised her to such an extent that she had referred to him as a monster. A lot about BG9 is shrouded in mystery, as we question the origin of his character and his backstory, which we know very little about. Some have assumed that he is a scientific experiment and he is the ninth iteration, thus explaining why he has a number in his name. While he is very robotic in nature, he does demonstrate a fear of death, which adds another layer of complexity to his character. BG9 may well have started life as a human whose body was modified extensively, maybe because he was pursuing a means of acquiring immortality by becoming an artificial being. Again, this is just speculation and it is one of many theories regarding his origin. Because his past isn't revealed within the manga, I'm going to jump straight into his first chronological appearance within the manga. BG9 is first introduced to us when he is confronted by Siphon in chapter 495 of the manga. While his battle against Siphon is very brief when it comes to the manga, it is expanded upon in episode 4 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. Siphon notices BG9 around a corner as the anime does eventually cut back to her fight during an extended anime exclusive scene, we see that she had attempted to attack 
attack BG-9 with his Shikai but it is ineffective. A tendril then extends from his cloak as Siphon avoids it by jumping into the air but she is still cut on the cheek by it as she wipes the blood from her face and smiles. In chapter 496 after Siphon activates her Bankai, BG-9 uses his medallion to steal it. Now we don't see BG-9 again for the remainder of the first Quincy invasion in both the anime and the manga. The next time that we do see him is in chapter 543 when he is present at a gathering where Yuabak announces that Uryu will be his successor, as we see BG-9 react in utter shock after hearing this announcement. Later on we see BG-9 discussing this news with Mask, Kangdu and Baz B, as Baz B frustratingly yells that he doesn't understand it, questioning who Uryu is, demanding that somebody explain to him what has just happened. BG-9 tells him that the only person who can answer his questions is Yuabak. After the Serite is replaced by the Wandenreich city, we see BG-9 appear at the Omaida family home in chapter 548. He confronts the lieutenant of Siphon because she is the captain that he has been tasked to kill after having stolen her Bankai during the first invasion. BG-9 throws Omaida against a wall, asking him about the location of his captain. The Sternritter exclaims that this is the third time that he is asking. He is expecting an answer from him this time round. BG-9 explains that he has searched the area using spiritual pressure samples he had gathered from Siphon during their last fight, but he is unable to find her despite extending the search area outside of the Serite. Omaida continues to say that he doesn't know where she is. The Sternritter decides that he's still refusing to answer him, but Omaida flips asking if he is stupid and how many times does he have to repeat himself. He really doesn't know where she is. He reveals that Siphon didn't tell him her location, as he insists that even if he had known he would have ended up letting it slip. He says that even if the Sternritter knew where Siphon is, there is no way that she would lose to the likes of him. After this emotional outburst, BG-9 robotically disregards what he has said and just states that he has refused to answer him for the third time, as he is now going to try another way to ask him. A tendril extends out from under his cloak and through one of the walls nearby, and he lifts the extension up into the air, revealing that he has fatally impaled Omida's younger sister. This moment never fails to shock me. It is one of the most jaw-dropping moments of the Quincy second invasion. His sister is seen bloodied as she calls out to her brother. BG-9 reveals that he knows that she is his family. He then robotically reveals that she may not look like him, but their spiritual pressures have a greater than 50% match. He also detects three other individuals who are most likely Omida's family members who also have high spiritual pressure matches with him. He reveals that they are within a 30 meter radius. BG-9 coldly threatens Omida that all of them will die if he refuses to answer his question again. Suddenly, the Sternritter is hit across the face with Omida's Shikai who orders him to let his sister go. BG-9 says that if he lets her go now, then she will lose a large amount of blood and die. He asks him if he's going to be okay with that. Omida tries to attack him again, but BG-9 intercepts the attack with his tendrils. The Sternritter tells him that he will give him 15 seconds to answer where Siphon is, but Omida gets furious over his sister being attacked. BG-9 then reveals his Reishi minigun. However, before he can use it, the weapon is destroyed by none other than Siphon, who says that she had expected a Quincy to be using a bow and arrow, not a minigun. BG-9 states that he didn't pick up anything on his sensor, but the captain reveals that the secret remote squad are able to cloak their spiritual pressure. BG-9 robotically lists her titles, revealing all of the data that he has on her, ending her info dump by asking her about her new appearance. She says that with all of the information he has on her, she is surprised that he doesn't know, as she reveals that this is her Shunko. BG-9 says that he knows, explaining that it is the highest form of Hakuda, a combat art of fighting, which is indicated by Kido covering the back and shoulders of the user. BG-9 continues to reveal how much data he has on her by saying that her Shunko should still be unperfected. Siphon responds by revealing that she had perfected her Shunko following her battle with Yoriichi during the Soul Society arc, and up until today she had been training to improve it even further. She tells him that her Shunko is wind, as she discovered a way to warp a vortex of spiritual pressure around her body, and once it is activated, she is able to keep fighting while her Shunko surrounds her. Siphon thanks him, stating that if she hadn't lost her Bankai to him, then she may not have been able to improve her Shunko to such an extent. She activates an ability called Infinite Shunko as she punches the Sternritter, generating a large blast following her incredibly powerful attack. Assuming that she had defeated him, she is surprised to see that BG-9 has survived after the dust settles, as we see a glow in his eyes signaling that the Quincy is ready to counterattack. In chapter 500, 
150, we see that following the attack, BG Nan fires one of his tendrils towards Siphon, but she jumps up into the air to avoid the attack. She grabs the tendril and yanks the Sternritter into several buildings, as she questions how is it that he's still able to breathe following her attack, describing him to be a monster. After he emerges from the rubble, BG9 reveals that he was never breathing to begin with, as she wonders if he is a robot, something that Myri would love to experiment on. BG9 opens up some of the armoured plates on his body, revealing multiple projectiles. The Quincy says that he is disappointed, because at her current level, there is no need to use the Bankai he had taken from her to defeat her. He fires all of the projectiles at her, which she appears to avoid, but she is then stabbed through the wrist by one of his extensions. He tells her that he has received useful data on her perfected Shunko, as an explosion erupts, engulfing both of them. In chapter 553, we see one of the creepiest panels involving BG9's character, where we see him gathering data from Siphon's lifeless body. He just looks really sinister, like an arachnid that has captured its prey. While gathering data, Omida appears and snatches Siphon away from him. BG9 asks him how is it that he still has the energy to resist despite his captain being defeated, telling him that he had wanted to gather more data from her before she dies. Omida gives her the shadow infiltration pill, which restores her Bankai. BG9 asks what he is whispering to her as he rebuts robotically explains that the sensitivity of his sonic collector drops after an explosion at close range, so he asks him to speak a little louder. After Siphon's Bankai becomes holified, it impairs BG9's bodily functions, as Siphon takes the opportunity to activate a Bankai, much to the Sternritter's shock, as he asks how it has returned to her. She fires her Bankai, which hits BG9 directly, causing a massive explosion and thus bringing an end to their battle. In chapter 554, we see BG9 have his Holy form activated, which revives him following his defeat. BG9 along with Kangdu are rescued and brought back to the Wandenreich headquarters as they are brought before Yuhabak for judgement, for being defeated on the battlefield. Hashwald steps forward to execute them as BG9 for the first time expresses human emotion, as he pleads for his life, saying that they may have temporarily lost, but they have been revived following the release of their holy forms. He insists that they can still be of service to Yuhabak, but when Hashwad cuts down Kangdu, BG9 yells at him to wait. When Kangdu blocks Hashwad's strike, BG9 is surprised. Hashwad explains that their good fortune must be balanced by giving them misfortune as he kills Kangdu, and BG9 is left to await a similar fate. In the end, the robotic data gathering Sternritter K BG9 is killed by Hashwad for having been defeated by the Shinigami. And this is pretty much everything that we know about BG9's character from his appearances within the manga and his extended fight sequence with. Siphon during the first core of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. I think that it's highly likely that we will get to see his shrift revealed to us in the second core hopefully, and I do hope that we get to learn more about his character, because it would be fascinating to learn more about his origins and backstory. So we've now reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What do you think about the character of BG9? He is definitely one of the more creepy Sternritter, with his frightening data extraction ability, combined with his inhuman appearance and robotic speech. It is yet to be confirmed if he is in fact a robot, some form of artificial intelligence, or just a modified human. So be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments about what you think he is. I've been really enjoying breaking down and analysing the different Sternritter, and I hope that this video has helped you to better understand BG9's character. Let's hope that Core 2 of the anime reveals that his shrift ability is the knowledge, which would confirm our suspicions about his shrift ability to be correct. Do you think that the letter K stands for something else? Be sure to let me know, and lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.